Hello everyone, welcome back. Today's lesson is lesson number three, the law of energy. So to understand the law of energy, I'll take you back to your physics class where you learned was everything is energy. And the formula you learned from the great mind and scientist of all time Albert Einstein's where he says the energy is equal to E, which is E equal to MC square. So anything you see which exists around you, which has a mass to it, can be called as it's a form of energy. So much so that I'm talking to I'm energy. You can see me that's an energy. This laptop is energy. This pen is energy. So everything which exists around us or anywhere in the universe is all energy. And like one of his biggest quotes, which actually I found it very interesting when he said that, that everything is energy and that is there all to it. So we cannot speculate or try to change that this is energy, this is not energy, or let's say this pen is energy, this is not. And then he says, one of his quotes, that this is all physics. It's not physiology or it's not some kind of philosophical idea. This is all pure physics. Now, what does the law of energy says? The law of energy says that energy cannot be created or it cannot be destroyed. So let's say once this has been, let's say, created in some way or shape or form, so it can only transform to another shape or form, but it cannot be destroyed. Even if you burn it down, if you burn down this pen, let's say, you will have some ashes to it. So it has changed its form. Right? So right now it's in the solid form. And when you have ashes, and you when you hold ashes, so you can see it can, it's just can, go away, like within a few seconds while you touch it. So it's very important to understand that this is all physics, that energy cannot be created. It is already there if it is in some shape or form and it cannot be destroyed. Okay, so that is the law of energy. For instance, when we have a water, it's in the liquid form, right? And then if we put it in freezer, it becomes solid as the ice. And if you take out that ice from the freezer and boil it, it evaporates gas. So what is happening here, that energy is still there, even if it's there in the gaseous form, but it is very much there. Now, if I may include, for instance, law of gravity. Now, what is law of gravity? That anything which falls from somewhere or anything which falls down on earth or on the, let's say, surface of the earth, it attracts it down. So it has to fall down. For instance, like an apple falls down from the tree, you will never find ever an apple flying off or getting stuck halfway and the earth is there, right? So it's very important to understand. Now, the important question is, do we see 
that when the apple is falling down from the tree and going to the surface, do we see any energy, any light connecting to it or anything, anything? And the answer is no, we don't. So it's invisible, but it exists, right? So somewhere in the law of attraction, we'll be talking about this, that there is something which happens not necessarily visible to us, but it is working. Okay, so that's another part of it. So that was the law of gravity. Again, we talked about. So I just wanted to make you feel that there's going to be a component where it's, it's, it's all physics uh, again, but not necessarily you'll be able to see them or feel them in some way. Okay, now, like I explained to you, the energy part of it. Now, uh, what is energy looks like or feels like and how we know it's energy? So we'll talk a little bit about that. So you see, everything has a vibration. For instance, this pen has a vibration. Why you see it as a pen? Because it's vibrating at a frequency which you see from far and you see it as a, as a pen. And this has vibrating at a blue frequency, so you see it as a blue pen. But again, when this pen is there, it's vibrating at a frequency where you see some portion of it is green and some portion of it is clear. What are vibrations? So vibrations, we'll talk about two contrast vibrations. What are those? We talk about high vibrations and low vibrations in context to law of attraction. So what are high vibrations? So simply for us to understand when we are in expensive mode, which is like when we are happy, we are joyful, we are blissful, we tend to extend our energy or vibrate at such a frequency that it is radiating outside of us. Now that gives a rise to another thing that we have an energy circle around us, which is known as a biofield. It almost extends to our arm's length, where it ends, you see around us that much area, it's all energy and it's our energy. Okay, so when you are in a, in a high vibe or high vibration, you tend to radiate a energy which is expensive, and the other person who's there, he catches at that frequency. And then that's why they call you, oh, you're feeling good today. Right? And when you are in low vibration, you contract. You don't want anybody to talk to you. You don't want anybody to say hi to you. You're not feeling well. You, you don't like picking a phone. So you contract. So that is a low vibration. So what is happening? Your energy field has contracted. And the frequency person is going to be uh, seeing you or looking at you is going to feel something not right. Okay, so these are the vibrations we talk about and energy works like that. Because like I said, I just explained to you, even this pen is vibrating at an energy and oscillating at a frequency where you see this pen as a blue pen. 
All right. Okay. I hope I was able to clarify what is law of energy, what is law of gravity, and what are vibrations and frequencies. Thank you.